Hello and welcome back. In today's video, let's have a look at a new plugin called Dehancer Film, of which I will do a quick review. This will also give me the opportunity to share how a plugin can be installed into Affinity Photo using a Mac. After the plugin installation files are downloaded and unpacked, we can start the installation. In the case of the Dehancer Film plugin, they provide different setup applications for various host applications. To install a plugin in Affinity, we will need to use the Photoshop version. They also have provided an installation guide. Will I read it? Nope. You only need your manual if you get stuck, right? Fingers crossed and I'm pretty confident I'm not going to need it. If you have installed applications on the Mac with an installer, you probably have seen this dialog. Consider it like a captcha. macOS is just making sure the app is being installed by a human. After I enter my local user credentials, our journey can continue. That went pretty smooth. Let's switch to Affinity and try our new toy. At the end, deep inside, we are all children. Interesting, our plugin is not showing up in the filter plugin menu. Playtime has to wait a bit longer. Remember, we used the Photoshop version to install, so probably we have to manually add the plugin to Affinity. Under the Preferences, I can open up the Photoshop plugin section. To add the plugin, I need to let Affinity know where the plugin was installed. Looks like this Add button in the Plugin Search folder list is the button we need for that. The big mystery right now is the path where the installation tool installed the plugin. I know for a fact that most Photoshop plugins are installed in the Plugins folder in Library, Application Support, Adobe. Now let's select the Dehancer folder. Excellent! Let's close the settings. Now, Affinity is pissed off at me and wants to restart because it can only load plugins while starting up. Who am I to say no? Now that Affinity is restarted and hopefully happy again, I can finally play with the new plugin. Or not. The plugin menu is still empty. Maybe I forgot something in the preferences. Aha! Affinity tells me the plugin is marked as unknown. Unknown makes unloved and undesirable. We have to tell Affinity to overcome its fear of the unknown by enabling this checkbox. Without fear and full of confidence, I can now try my new toy. Yes, I can see the plugin, but I can't use it. What kind of sorcery is this? What am I missing here? Maybe there is no layer selected? You cannot fool me, let's try again. Nope. Wait a minute. What do plugins do? They change the pixels in a layer. So we need a layer with pixels. Of course, an image layer is not a pixel layer in Affinity. So let's use some right click magic on the layers panel and convert this image to a pixel layer by rasterizing it. Finally, time to play. Well, actually before I can play it, the plugin will need to initialize itself and I need to make sure that I'm connected to the internet. Well, I try not to be, but life without internet is not possible anymore. Yes, of course I'm connected, so let's download these profiles. A nice progress bar means something is happening and it looks like the plugin is now ready. So, finally, time to play. The plugin dialog looks pretty standard. A toolbar on the top with self explanatory buttons. On the left, it looks like we can choose film profiles. They are nicely grouped per style, or as Dehancer calls it, per film type. They act like LUT adjustments, which recreate the look of a specific old film. The thumbnail previews are really useful, so you don't have to guess what the color adjustment will look like. 
If I select one, it is applied to the main preview at the center of the plugin window. We all want plugins with sliders, right? So on the right, we have some additional effects and color adjustment to make something cool using sliders. Two things I immediately like about this plugin. One is the option to turn on and off sections, and the second is the snappiness of the plugin. Changes are applied very quickly to the preview. This makes playing with sliders fun and allows experimenting to get a cool look. The sections Bloom and Halo Control are for me the most interesting. I see a lot of potential here. Just with a couple of clicks, I was able to make this image pretty interesting, which is exactly what a plugin should do. Before applying the changes, let me preview the before. Yep, definitely amazing. Time to apply it. As this is a trial version of the plugin, it puts a watermark in the end result. Keep also in mind that plugins are destructive, so it's always a good idea to have them apply to a duplicate of your original layer. Let's have a quick look what I did, and I think I just created a pretty amazing look without much effort. Let's try it on a different image and look a little bit more on detail on the various options it has. In the meantime, the nice guys from Dehancer provided me with an activation key for testing, so we won't see the watermark in the end result. The plugin comes with a large amount of film profiles and can really help you to get that atmosphere of an old school film. I think the real power of this plugin comes to play when you start adjusting the various filter properties on the right. Let me select a film profile. This looks nice. Time to adjust some sliders and see what this plugin can do more. So first we have some color temperature control with tint compensation. On top of it, it has a different control which allows to clean up some color residue after changing the color temperature. In the expand section, we can modify the black and white point of the image, making the image darker or brighter. There is an option to select how this will be applied, either normal or luma. The luma option allows for a more subtle effect. Next, we have the print section, which I believe simulates the effect as if it was printed on a photo paper. You can control the tonal output with the sliders. An interesting section is the film grain section. This will allow you to add some realistic film grain to the image. To see the grain a bit better, let me turn off the fit the window option. You have plenty of options to create the film grain you're looking for. The color head section contains a color balance tool where you can move the colors around and it does a pretty good job. With halation, you can create these nice halos or glows in your image. If I zoom in again, you can see the effect more clearly. Related to this is the bloom section. This is pretty cool. You can very quickly create a bloom effect. I really like how the bloom is created. Notice how the small lights are all amplified and got this glow added to them. Pretty amazing. The final section is the vignette section. Here you can quickly add a vignette to your image of which you can control the exposure and other properties like size and feathering. A nice feature of this plugin is that you can also add presets. So if you want to use the exact settings again, you can save it as a preset in the plugin. Next time you just apply your preset. Very useful. Let's press OK and apply it to the pixel layer. Pretty awesome. Let me quickly set it to difference blend mode and see the changes with the original. As I added a lot of halo and bloom to it, you can clearly see where these have been applied to. So, is it a good plugin? Yes, for sure. But it is pricely. I believe it's around $200. Is it worth the money? Well, that depends, I guess. If you're going to apply a lot of old school film looks and make money from it, I think it's definitely worth it. Probably, you can create most of its effect manually, but looking how easy it is with this plugin, 
it will save you a ton of time. On the other hand, if you're a hobbyist, I think $200 is a lot of money and I would definitely spend my $200 in other photo applications or even hardware, which you will probably use much more often than this plugin. I feel like this plugin is more geared towards professional users and is definitely worth in that context. You get a lot of film profiles and the output is just amazing. Thank you again for watching and until the next video.